If Americans read the Environmental Protection Agency's final rule implementing the Renewable Fuel Standard for 2013, they'd understand why business people directly affected by the regulation want Congress to scrap the underlying law. To simplify, the law requires the impossible. It mandates sales of more conventional ethanol than the market needs or soon will need. It requires far more cellulosic biofuel than anyone can produce. It stuffs requirements into confusing and overlapping categories. Cellulosic biofuel, biomass-based diesel, advanced biofuel, and it makes EPA sort out the mess. To EPA's credit, the final rule for 2013, although months late when published on August 6th, acknowledges two problems the agency has treated insufficiently in the past. It lowers the requirement for cellulosic biofuel to an amount that actually might be available this year, and it hints at regulatory adjustment for the blend wall when biofuel requirements exceeds market capacity next year. EPA could have wielded its waiver authority more helpfully, but the nod toward reality is welcome. Now, in ethanol equivalent volumes, 6 million gallons of cellulosic biofuel must be sold in the U.S., down from the 14 million gallons EPA initially proposed, which was down from 1 billion gallons in the law. The biomass-based diesel requirement is 1.28 billion gallons, and the total advanced biofuel requirement is 2.75 billion gal gallons, which EPA is confident can be met because it required 2 billion gallons last year and supply was 337 million gallons higher, thanks to 580 million gallons of imported ethanol made from sugarcane. A striking feature in the 89-page final rule is how much trouble EPA must undertake for so little energy. Whether or not EPA's cellulosic and advanced biofuel targets really can be met, 2.75 billion gallons in a year hardly counts as missed in the 13.9 million barrels per day U.S. market for transport fuel. Meanwhile, affected businesses must buy credits to the extent they can't meet impossible requirements. Lucky for Congress, most Americans won't read the final rule. They'll just have to pay for it. I'm Bob Tippy, editor of Oil & Gas Journal, and that's the editor's perspective that appeared first in text at www.ogj.com on August 9, 2013.